what are we up to? Day six of the ultimate adventure. Our boys from Minnesota, where are they? Ben and Chad. The repair we did on the rear drive shaft left it not balanced for sure. We have to see how the rest of the trip goes. We got to evaluate the damage from the Rubicon the last two days and decide whether or not it's something that we can uh, get fixed tonight and press on. They fought a very valiant fight. Let's give them a big hand. Loaded with supplies and our camping gear, the rest of the group pulled out of Truckee for the entrance to Fordyce Creek Trail, Highways Be Damned. We took the most scenic route, passing Donner Lake and going over Donner Summit Bridge on our way through 7,000 feet in elevation. With lower temperatures through the pass, the vehicles didn't mind the climb and the drivers could kick back and enjoy the views. Just came up old historic Route 40 from Truckee. We're here at the trailhead for Fordyce Creek. So we just pulled into the Fordyce uh, start of the trailhead here and uh, we go to air down and if this isn't a sign of things to come, oh boy, I'm a, I'm a little concerned having my uh, Dana 44 up front, but uh, it'll be a long, hard day of uh, trying to keep things alive. Should be fun though, booyah! This is one of my favorite trails. It's definitely a jewel of the Sierra Nevadas and a lot of mining history. It's a tough trail and beautiful. It's got every element to just make the ultimate adventure. We're well, at the first edge to go on Fordyce Trail. This is called Driveline Hill. I think we want to be in low range for this one. Even double down if you got an ORP double or a Magnum in your rig. Fordyce Creek Trail is as long as it is beautiful. And the farther in the trail you go, the better the scenery and the more challenging the obstacles. The Rubicon may be the world's most famous trail, but Fordyce Creek Trail has got to be one of the most visually spectacular. So coming down the trail, I'm running, I'm running some cheapy white shocks in the front and I was able to put the skyjackers on the rear. Um, it's definitely smoother in the rear, especially with all this weight, it's controlling it really well. And then getting to that ledge back there, I was able to climb it, no wheel hop, no, no spin, really nothing. It was working good. The skyjackers are hooking up for sure this weekend. Pretty impressive how the guys from Florida are rock crawling. Those guys don't have a rock in the whole state, and they come out here to the West Coast and they're dominating. The Chevy truck is where it's at. Yeah, Cooper's hung up on a little rock up here on this hill, so we're just gonna throw the bubble rope on and give him a little tug back and get him pulled off, and then we'll give him a hard time for two or three days about this. Hey, we just come into Fort Ice, hit the first obstacle. It's called Driveline Hill. Uh, it's a little switchback type trail here at the bottom. Uh, some very porous rocks. The Falcon tires are hooking up great. Didn't hardly spin a tire coming up. The, it's a pretty steep obstacle, so looking forward to the rest of the day and see what it brings. So the front of the group is just getting to Sunrise Hill. Traditionally during Sierra Trek, the group starts really early in the morning so they can run the whole trail in one day. And they're getting to this point right as the sun is coming up and shining directly into their eyes. I have a fuel pressure, high pressure pump under the hood and some kind of fitting popped out of it and we're gonna have to take it apart and see if it'll go back in there. It doesn't look like it's broken or anything. I just wonder if it got a little bit over pressured and popped out. Yeah, it looks like all it did was wrap. 
Nice. So the mechanical engine driven fuel pump feeds this. And in there is a high pressure fuel pump, which bumps the fuel pressure up for the fuel injection system. Yeah, all of this stuff is factory for 1949 Willys. The Dodge 505 cubic inch Dodge 440, that's factory. Okay, we're bolting it back together. We got that little electric sensor back into the unit. And uh, we had to take it all apart just to see how everything went back together. But it's back together now and we're just bolting it in and getting the lines back in place and a bit here we'll let the engine push some gas up to the sump and hopefully she'll start. One of the, the uh, things about four dice that's really famous is the river crossings and they're traditionally very deep and sometimes unpassable. So, looks like we're doing okay. I got some water coming in. But, looks like we're doing all right. Well, we just made it past our first water crossing. It was deep, but not too deep. I think it just went above the uh, Falcon 37 inch tires. Um, it's not too bad. There's no rocks in the way, so we didn't get hung up or anything, and everyone went, made it by uh, with no issues. So now it's lunchtime, enjoying our string cheese and Absolutely. some sandwiches. I believe Coop has a soggy sandwich now because the sandwiches were on his floorboard, but <laughs> other than that, I think it's good. <laughs> good stuff. First water crossing was pretty good. It was, I don't know, I think it was probably up to the door handles, but barely got my feet wet in here, um, and I disconnected the electric fan before going through so that that wasn't spinning and shorting out. But all good, can't wait for the next one. This is the first real obstacle you come to on Fordyce Creek Trail. Before our guide, Harry Wagner, pulled up from the rear of the group to set us straight, we were calling it Winch Hill 1. In reality, this is commonly known as Winch Hill 1 half, and it proved tougher than it looks. That granite got slippery on that climb. Somebody else is going to have to show me how to get up that one. Hey, just come up the first uh, windshield one. They say only had two tries, and there was a little bit easier side, a little bit harder side. So as you can see, I went ahead and hit both sides in one attempt. So I think I done good. There you go. Durham will be the guy that'll kill this. He makes it. bit too far to the right first time, try to extreme line. Uh, thought the front end was going to fall off in the hole. Oh, just had to find the right line. back to my original plan and hit it dead on the next time. So, made it look easy the last time. That was awesome. I was, uh, was kind of worried with the extra weight, so high, but it felt good. Uh, warming the tires up, Falcon tires heat up real quick. They're great. You can see right there. I mean, they did the job. I had a great time. You know, I had to get my line. I was trying to crawl the peaks the first few times, uh, and I had to get that left side in the rut. Durham showed me the line. So uh, just stick on the skinny pedal and uh, ride it out. It's a good time. The 
line everybody told me would work was the one that worked. The line that I thought would work did not work. Not so sure. sometimes you have to listen to your friends. Yep, I'm stuck. Oh no! Winch in! The bubble rope. Winch line. We're on Winch Line Hill on the Ford Ice. Old Cooper down there stuck on a rock, and we're going to use this bubble rope winch line to get him out. Since most of its obstacles are named after winch hills, Fordyce Creek promised to give the Warren Winch and Bubba Rope sponsored products a good workout. And so far, the trail's delivering on that promise. The way it's going on Winch Line Hill here, I think we're going to hang out and see if any other guys need a Bubba Rope winch line. They're having a little trouble getting over that last rock at the top. So we'll be here to help them out. Late in the afternoon, we approached the real Winch Hill 1. It's an imposing granite sluice with a tight off-camber squeeze at the top that's just itching to toss a 4x4 on its we're side. We're down It's very rocky and loose. I managed to get by the last obstacle, but uh, this entire time, revving RPM to like three to 4,000, I forgot to turn my fan on. So it's a little hot, I'm gonna let it cool down, and then uh, we'll continue on. It's not really relevant if you go right over it. that one. Hey Andrew, is that Navi an aluminum tub, or is it a steel tub in the stretch? Steel, aluminum armor. I'm getting up the hill, but I'm having to get out of this thing. Woo! 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 I was getting good grip from my Falcon Mud tires. The rocks were really big, but the water's a little higher. Don't mess with just throw. Thanks for taking us through there, Christian. How are you doing, boss man? <laughs> We done tore up all kinds of shit down there. <laughs> yeah, you missed it. Fun, huh? <laughs> I was tearing shit up out here. How's your rental truck? Where's your company car? <laughs> I think I lost my deposit. <laughs> the sun was setting and with the whole group past Winch Hill 1, we pushed forward in search of a campsite large enough to hold the whole group. With the raging river for background music, we lit up the campfires and got dinner cooking over open flames. little slab right here we got to get up um, looks like everybody's uh, falling off to the right so I'm gonna try to keep it up on the left right there and climb through it
like a broken axle shaft. Well, I think it's just too wide for that. That was all of the whoop hows and about the best place I could put it. And we'll just use the winch to get out of here now. I got in a place where I don't even think I can back up without rolling it over, so I use the winch to hold me up and I'll go on through forward that way. I was told I only had one chance. So this is the last obstacle of Ultimate Venture 2016. And by tradition, I normally break my vehicle here. I gave it a good shot, but I'm opting for the winch, which is a better alternative to keeping up my tradition and blowing up my, my rig on the last day. So Fred's going to get it hooked up. We're going to pull it up and head uh, for Reno for the party. Coming through the V-notch there, that pinched the front axle and, and the steering ram itself actually bent the center link out. Yeah. Luckily it went forward. So all yeah. we did is we pulled against the rock to push it back in. So now we've got enough clearance to clear the ram and the steering and everything. So I think it's good to go to drive back to town. So that's a wrap on Ultimate Adventure 2016. We began day one with some good old fashioned rock crawling on Isham Canyon Trail just outside of Ridgecrest, California. On day two, the group sizzled across Death Valley on one of the hottest days of the year before arriving at our cold campground at June Lake. For day three, we had an epic drive through the picturesque June Lake Loop and then hightailed it through Yosemite National Park on Highway 120. We were up way before the sun on day four so we could make it roughly halfway through the Rubicon Trail to our campsite at Buck Island Lake. We packed day five with the rest of the Rubicon Trail. On day six, we rolled out past Donner Lake, climbing through Donner Pass and hit the entrance to Fordyce Creek Trail. After spending the night on Fordyce, we made our last obstacle attempts before hightailing it to Reno on day seven's wrap up. Be sure to keep your eyes on Four Wheel and Off-Road Magazine and check our super site at fourwheeler.com backslash ultimate hyphen adventure for info on how you can submit your entry to be selected to join us on next year's Ultimate Adventure. <laughs>